This clip is brought to you by Piedmontese Beef, the best beef on the planet. Use code POWER for 25% off your entire order. Enjoy the clip and enjoy your meat. For you, why, like, because Kansas, they're the number one team, and you're a young strength coach, right? Mm -hmm. So if they had, like, why did they pick you? I know you're very good. And you're very good at what you do. But, like, when a strength coach looks at your career and they're like, I want to be able to do what he's doing, what did you do through your career to be able to be strength coach for the Kings at 28, 27? Uh, head strength coach at 25, assistant at 23. <laughs> <laughs> right? Head strength coach at the Kings at 25. And now you're the strength coach at Kansas, the number one team. And you've been doing that for a few years now. Yeah, three years. Three years. Yeah. How like how did you navigate your career to be able to do this so successfully? Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, I mean, top level academic wise, like I got a doctorate in it, and I think that helps, oh. right? So like a doctorate in human sport performance with a dissertation in workload monitoring and injury prediction, like on paper that sounds good. Right? Mm, that so sounds like very good. he checks the boxes, I think, from that level. Um, but I think more importantly is just like I think the soft skills. I've, I've been fortunate to have really good mentors who have given me opportunities and built relationships and built relationships with athletes. So like when I got hired for the Kings, I was 23. And after two years, my boss left to the Chicago Bulls. He's still there now, Chip Schaefer. Um, OG Chip Schaefer, that's my guy. He was the athletic trainer for the Bulls in the 90s. Mm. He's Phil Jackson's mm. guy. So like my mentor, one of my mentors has 11 wow. rings, like incredible. Mm. But he taught me the ropes of the game, all the small things like, um, you know, post game when it's time to eat, don't eat before the players, right? Like there's the little rules that you don't really know and you have just have to learn through experience or failures. So those things are important because you don't piss anyone off. I think the first part about building relationships is don't piss anyone off. Like don't go in the negative first, <laughs> right? Mm. Um, and then I think it's just building relationships. Like our, the players really bought into what I wanted to do. And so when it was time, I'm sitting there at 25 and my boss leaves and I'm like, yo, like am I gonna have to find a new job? I'm looking at the college market. Cause like, again, I'm 25 and I'm like, yeah. eh, it might be time to figure something out. And my, another mentor came to me and said, hey, you think you can do this? And I'm a confident dude. So I'm like, yeah, of course I could do this stuff. I know what I'm doing. Uh, but there's like imposter syndrome, right? Like, oh shit, I don't know if I actually could do it, but I'm definitely gonna tell you I could do it, right? <laughs> I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna be very confident to you. But like I'm gonna, you're hired, and you're like, oh shit, yeah. For and I remember telling him that that day I told him I could do it, and I actually made a mistake that day. I still remember so vividly. I forgot to take a measurement on someone, and I remember thinking like, yo, you just told this dude you're ready. You're clearly not ready. Um, but I think that the reason he felt comfortable. Because when I said, I said, oh, I could do that. He said, I think you could do it too. And I'm going to push for you to get this job. Mm. And they could have posted it and had hundreds of applications for it. Yeah. I mean, it's a head NBA strength coach job. There's only 30 jobs. Um, but he didn't. He gave it to me. And I think the real reason was he knew I was finishing a doctorate degree. So he knew on paper, academically, I, could, I was checking those boxes. He knew I was super passionate about the sport and about the game and about research. Because I was the dude that was coming in with research every day. Yo, check this new paper out. Check this out. Mm. Um, I built a network. And so I think that he liked that because he knew that if we needed an answer to a question, I can go figure it out from people I know. Um, and then I think ultimately the last, the, the, the kind of cherry on top was that the players enjoyed being around me. Yeah. And the navigation there was, are you their friend or can you be in authority position? And I think that he was confident that I could navigate that part of it because that is hard. It's hard to be a relatively young guy and your players are just as old as you and they want to go out to the club with you but now you have to change up kind of your strategy and behavior. Uh, and I learned that early. Like when I first got to the Kings, players didn't really rock with me much. They were kind of, I was, you know, I was on the workout floor every day. Cause that's what you do as a young strength coach. You're on the floor every day. Uh, but they would always wait for the head guy to come in. And I remember it was, it was, I thought it had to do with, they didn't believe in how competent I was in strength and conditioning. And that mm -hmm. wasn't at all. They just didn't have a relationship with me. So over a couple of months, and I remember we went to China my first trip, and we ended up at a club, and I'm not advocating you go to the club with your players. <laughs> we went to a club, and I went with our support staff, yeah. but our players ended up there, and they saw me kind of in a fun environment. And the next day, I get a knock on my door, and there's two players saying, yo, Ram, let's get some work in. And I've never been asked that from these guys, but it was I realized it was, you, you knew I knew how to do strength and conditioning. You didn't know if you wanted to be around me. <laughs> and so that I think part of it now I'm not telling you to go to the club but what I'm telling you is build a relationship be a likable person uh, be vulnerable be open to conversations that maybe they're not used to right? mm -hmm. I always tell my guys even now if the only thing you learn from me is how to trap bar deadlift I'm not doing my job <laughs> and so as long as we can build that out then guys will buy in because strength and conditioning nobody's going to argue that strength and conditioning isn't good for you we're not selling something that's hard to sell right? I'm not a used car salesman like, you know this is good for you 
it's whether or not you want to buy into me with this stuff. So yeah, I think all those come to mind. Like check the boxes academically if you can. I'm not saying you have to. If you want to work in pro sports, you probably need a master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, but check those boxes so you're competent. Build a network because unfortunately or fortunately, like our network is who we are, right? Like opportunities come our way based on who we know, especially in, in almost any field. But in SNC, if the job's posted online, it's likely they already have five candidates they want. They just did that because they had to. Yeah. So build a network and then ultimately build relationships. Be likable. And I think if you can do those things, you'll end up in a pretty good spot over time. And then last but not least, be fortunate. Like I always acknowledge that. Like I was fortunate to – the reason Coach called me with Kansas is because – one of our old scouts with the Kings had worked with him years ago. And so the scout who uh, I didn't even know was evaluating me as a strength coach, but really liked what I was doing just by watching. And so when Kansas needed a strength coach, he calls Bill Self and says, this is who you need. He's, you know, the best in the NBA and whatever that means. Right. But that's what he said. And I was younger and that helped because mm. coach wanted a younger strength coach to kind of fill the gap between the coaching staff and their age gap mm. and, and where I was. So some of that helps, right, at times. So there's been times where I get sized up because I'm young. Mm -hmm. But it's like, well, while you're sizing me up and worried about me, my players can relate to me because I could play the same music they can. I could send them DMs. I could talk shit with them. Like, I'm at <laughs> so their level. on Instagram. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and now it's fun because I'm at an age gap with my players now. So with the Kings, I was around their age. But now I'm at yeah. this age gap where, you know, because I'm 31 and they're 21 <laughs> – we can still talk the fun stuff of life and we could talk about music and relationships or whatever. But then there's also like, oh, I can talk to you about going through things in life. I could talk to you about the stock market. I could talk to you about buying your first house. I could talk to you about showing love to your family, calling your, your grandma or whatever. Like we can talk mm. those bigger items that I think are just as important. But if you can't have fun with the guys, it's going to be hard to relate. But once you have that relatability, build that into the relationship because like they, they expect me to talk more about the other stuff. Yeah. Like, if I just talk music, they'll say, ain't no free game. We call it free game now. Free game, man. We need some free game. And I might go into like, yo, man, the stock market's down for this reason, this, whatever. Uh, and that's been so cool because now the players go to the NBA, like, they'll contact me back and say, Abraham, so I'm about to get this money, but I don't want to blow it. What do you think I should do? And I'm not, like, yo, I'm not a financial advisor, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you're bought in, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Sick, a very man. long way to say, you know, check the boxes academically or ed ed education wise. Build the network and then be relatable. Be relatable. Yeah. Could you beat me in a game of horse? <laughs> mm, I like my chances. <laughs> <laughs> I like your chances I, too. I, me three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks so much for being on the show today. Appreciate your time and congratulations on winning a national championship. You got the ring with you or something? Nah, like, no, where is this no thing? ring yet, man. I'll send you a pic when we get in a few. Oh, months, you don't have it yet. Not yet. Yeah, they're, they're building it. So, but thank you guys so much for having me. Damn, that would be sweet if you walked in here with like a world title or something. championship ring or something. Yeah. Next yeah. time. Yeah, we should petition for that. Instead of rings, you should get belts. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be sick. Walking around with a championship <laughs> on your shoulder all the time. So, Pat Roger family, I hope you enjoyed this clip. We are on Discord and Reddit. We're trying to talk to you guys and build a community down there. So the links are in the bio. But remember, like, comment, subscribe, share this out with people so you can share the wealth of health. As cheesy as that fucking sounds. Peace.